Good afternoon everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the Bitcoin chart from BitcoinCharts.com. Going to spend some time in this episode talking about Bitcoin seniorage, but before we get to that I want to do some technical analysis on the chart. This is the lifetime chart of Bitcoin. You can see we started off at uh, infinitesimal one cent or so and the run up to 30 plus so that is a 3,000 fold gain that's still a spectacular gain you we're still at a thousand plus gain on the Bitcoin so that's a very very large gain for the early adopters now the question is going to become very important how much accumulation and distribution has gone on since the early adopters came on and I think you'll see when we look down below that it's actually been quite a bit the first indicator we have below here is the volume you can see this volume spike here of nearly 400,000 bitcoins that's going to be the equivalent of four million dollars at current prices or roughly a quarter of the market cap I'm not sure what it is the total is going to be 21 million I think we're about halfway there so nearly half the market cap turned over and uh, not nearly uh, as much turned over when we had this big smackdown from the 32 price all the way down to about 250 to three dollars so there's a lot of volume that has come in I will call this accumulation this is new buyers and uh, a diversified base of buyers coming in uh, the same sort of thing is happening recently now you can see that on the next indicator this is the accumulation distribution index so you can see that this downtrend here very very long uh, downtrend from 32 down to 3 a, a good 90 percent decline in the price was uh, accompanied by this decline in accumulation and distribution so there was a large distribution at this point and then began the accumulation right with this gigantic buy spike now what's interesting about this now is that you can see here at about May or so actually June we had a breakout in new highs in accumulation that did not at all correspond with a breakout into new prices you can see new price highs we're far far from them at around six or so with uh, the accumulation breaking out so what does that mean you can see we're kind of leveling off here at a very very high level of accumulation um, well it can mean a couple of things the first thing is that uh, the distribution of the base of people uh, who are accumulating Bitcoin is becoming much much broader and uh, that may very well be the case or it may be the case that uh, as some have speculated and we'll see that when we look at the story from Tadesian that perhaps Bitcoin has been infiltrated and uh, it is being sold off on a slow rate now I've contended for a long time that if the Bitcoin is hacked then the price will collapse to zero that's not necessarily the case if it were hacked by a very very intelligent group of people they could dilute the price over a period of time as uh, the base grows so this could be pointing to that this anomaly if this anomaly does not resolve itself uh, either in a large crash in this chart or a very large breakout in this chart then uh, Tadesian's theory may be true but before we get over to that I want to talk about Bitcoin seniorage first of all though I want to show you uh, some of the other chart sites this is bitcoincharts.com the other one I use is bitcoinity.org uh, this one shows your recent transactions and uh, gives you the uh, distribution of the buys and sells here and then you got kind of an interesting chart with volume that one's a little bit useful also the Clark Moody site uh, this is a good one for watching current price changes on a chart real-time chart and also it has a very interesting market depth analysis so you can see here if you go down to the market depth you can see the pressures 
quite a bit higher on the sell side now when we have about 2700 around 3000 but the depth of buyers is only around 500 so you can watch that change in real time so those are some of the interesting tools I'll go ahead and link those now I want to take you to the new page that I've got here this is the new blog for the Bitcoin channel dot com uh, this is a domain that I signed up recently and it's going to be a sister blog to the YouTube channel uh, this is running on Drupal. I've never used that before. This is uh, Kevin, my super network uh, open source uh, guru extraordinaire has set this up for me. And uh, so it's going to have a blog. The front page is going to be a blog. At the current time, it just has all the Bitcoin reports on it. But uh, it's going to have, once I begin to start covering all the news, then it's going to cover all the relevant Bitcoin news as I begin to post those stories. That will be on the main page. There's also a Bitcoin reports page where uh, I'll sticky these reports when I put them out and then they'll also be available for historical basis on this uh, tab or if you want to go and see those you can. There will also be a forum and I uh, encourage you to sign up and uh, the forum is going to be like my silver channel where you can go on to the forum and uh, you can ask questions for me to answer in the videos so I encourage you to go ahead and sign up again we're still in the beginning stages of this but uh, this is uh, really exciting for me I think it's something that's going to grow as the Bitcoin grows now I wanted to show you some of the other social media sites uh, I'm trying to promote the Bitcoin by promoting this channel through social media uh, this is the Facebook page. I'm not very active on Facebook. I just use it as a shout out sort of thing. I don't have time to uh, do all the Facebooking that people do, but it's the Bitcoin channel on Facebook. Uh, this is the YouTube channel, of course. On YouTube, it is Bitcoin channel. Uh, the Twitter account is Bitcoin channel. And last of all, if you haven't gotten involved, uh, it is Bitcoins is the stock symbol on Empire Avenue. If you haven't done that, it's kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, I started off early and uh, I'm trying to promote Bitcoins and the Bitcoin channel through Empire Avenue. So you can see that you connect all your social media and uh, then your stock gains and you can buy and sell stock in other social media. Uh, so I do need help to get this Bitcoin channel blog to become upgraded, this RSS to be upgraded to a blog. So for those of you who are out there on Empire Avenue, uh, come by and give an endorsement. Once I get five endorsements, then this will become a blog. Also, go ahead and sign up. You can buy stock in Bitcoins. That's the symbol. Also, Brother John F. is my other channel. You can buy stock in those and uh, buy and sell others. So that's kind of interesting. So before we get over to the seniorage, I want to read the article from the uh, Theodesian, and this is Bitcoin hologram of a cryptocurrency. I think you'll understand when we read what he says here that he does not believe that Bitcoin is completely above board. He actually believes that, uh, well, you'll see what he believes as we, we read this. And I'm going to use this to segue into the issue of seniorage. I wrote an earlier post going over Bitcoin in it. I made a prediction that it would be more successful than most suspect, and I stand by that, but upon reflection, not for the reasons cited there. I was always suspicious about one or two technical parts of Bitcoin, and the interview with one of the big Bitcoin movers and shakers on the Peter Schiff show, along with Gavin Andreessen's visit to the CIA, have not helped such. Considering the history of cryptocurrencies, I could not believe that anyone would want to get the government involved in any way. Cypherpunks hate the government's control and would not even try to sidle up to the powers that be. So I am forced to conclude that this has nothing to do with the cypherpunk movement and their primary child, the cryptocurrency. The fact that you see almost no mention whatsoever of J. Orlin Grabs, DMT, True Ledger, or even Lucre Open Transactions on the Bitcoin forum, or practically any Bitcoin information sources gives me great pause. This, along with a few other things, have led me to the conclusion that Bitcoin is not a cryptocurrency, 
but a hologram of a cryptocurrency. To summarize my previous article, Bitcoin is basically the same as dollars from a technical standpoint, but with added advantages of being scarce and not being controlled by the Fed banking cartel. I think I left out the most important reason things will succeed, which I thought at the time was a fairly trivial conclusion to make based on the lack of Fed control. That advantage would be that anybody can get in on the seniorage train. Bitcoin is literally a gold rush. Add these tough economic times to all the unemployed hipsters with computers, and that's about all you need to conclude Bitcoin isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's worth noting what I'm not saying here, though. Gold is scarce and not controlled by a banking cartel. Plus, it can't be physically destroyed like Bitcoin wallets can be done with a keystroke. Now, I would have to disagree with that. That question remains to be seen. Gold is indeed scarce, but is gold not controlled by a banking cartel? I think if you follow my silver channel, and the machinations that are going on with the German central bank gold and others. It's an open question as to whether or not gold is actually a banking cartel controlled commodity. Uh, if you're familiar with FOFOA, you know that the free gold movement is uh, an attempt to move towards a free gold monetary system. But then again, how much of the gold do the central banks control? We just don't know the answer to that question. But I think we're going to find out the answer to that question in the near future. So why would anyone use bitcoins over gold? Well, it would have to be a cryptocurrency to have an edge. And I did not define explicitly what that was. The primary selling point of cryptocurrency is that it cannot be tracked. Not that it is possible not to be tracked. Bitcoins all contain a transaction history. Ergo, they're all unique. Ergo, they are imminently traceable unless you launder them, which is the real problem if one has to go out of your way to launder things. The government can criminalize such an act and the ability to evade taxes and exchange controls. The reason to have cryptocurrency in the first place as a matter of form is basically gone. There are other systems that did and do have un real untraceability yet can be used in transactions credibly as the tokens are basically receipts as laid out here. I even linked to them in the introduction, so why no mention? Why the tra trying to be friends with the government and why did this currency initially be billed as proof of concept take off? All the arguments I used to justify Bitcoin in my previous analysis apply, yet are even stronger in the cases of Bitcoin's competitors. Its sudden su success is because it was the first decentralized one. The DMT, eGold, and others being shut down cannot happen to Bitcoin despite it not being a cryptocurrency in the most important way. However, the ability to modify Bitcoin to not have transaction registers beyond the last one and to make everyone's wallet a part of the network and thus not destroyable could be easily added and such will be done. This will result in a pretty much perfect cryptocurrency, supposing it uses the strongest crypto it can. However, I doubt it will take over and kill Bitcoin despite it being better for the intended purpose. This is because there will be a huge number of folks with large vested interest. Indeed, there are several large interests already in keeping Bitcoin going, and the government, when confronted with a perfect cryptocurrency, will opt to stick with the devil it knows that the Bitcoin majors seem to be trying to cozy up to governments makes me think that they are perhaps anticipating this and to their credit they see what little improvement this represents over the dollar as worth it. It is a pity in this regard, worse is better. However, this does not change the fact that people will use the better form whether Bitcoiners or the government wants them to. And this gives me hope due to the extreme police stating that will be required to stop it. Anything that can kill a perfect cryptocurrency from being used will kill the imperfect one too. So maybe Gavin and Don Norman aren't so out there sidling up to the powers that be. Perhaps they think Bitcoin could go from being a mere hologram, a false promise, into a Trojan horse. 
If it catches on enough to become widely legitimate, there will be no stopping real cryptocurrency from coming along and dealing the killing blow to asset taxation. I think that may be a bridge too far. However, governments will not like having their seniorage gravy train taken away. This is a serious barrier to becoming legitimate. Furthermore, if things are forced by a dollar collapse, it is more likely that gold rises back to the top than Bitcoin. So I think we have to go back to the strategy of the cipher punks. Use barter, dead, dropping, like with True Ledger and real cryptocurrency to take yourself out of the system. Run silent, run deep. Withdrawal of consent from the current system is what is required for real change. So excellent article by... Uh, Theodesian, I don't know if I agree completely. I have my doubts. Is Bitcoin a true cryptocurrency? I'm assuming we're going to find out. Now, let's look at seniorage and try to understand this. Uh, simply put, seniorage is the difference between the value of money and the cost to produce it. The term can be applied in the following ways and it goes back to the metal the cost of coining metal now if you look at the Constitution uh, the Constitution provides for the coining of money so the state has the monopoly on the coining what that really means uh, is just stamping an approved seal on the amount of metal the Constitution defined uh, that uh, it was gold and silver and then the coin act went on to define the number of grains of silver in a dollar so the government's role in that case was to simply stamp uh, the approved amount uh, the approved weight onto that coin and put the government stamp of approval to prove that it was actually the amount that you're looking at now Today's seniorage is completely different because we're looking at a seniorage on a currency that really doesn't even exist for the most part in physical form. Now it's true that we have a large amount of dollar bills and we have a large amount of coins, but as far as the size of the money supply, it's just a tiny, tiny fraction of the money supply. So the real seniorage that's collected by governments is collected as a tax. So let's read this. Seniorage as a tax. Some economists regarded seniorage as a form of inflation tax, redistributing real resources to the currency issuer. Issuing new currency rather than collecting taxes paid out of existing money stock is then considered in effect a tax that falls on those who hold existing currency. The expansion of the money supply may cause inflation in the long run. This is one reason offered in support of free banking, a gold standard, or at a minimum, the reduction of political control over central banks. The latter could then take as their primary objective ensuring a stable value of currency by controlling monetary expansion and thus limiting inflation. Independence from government is required to reach this aim. Indeed, it is well known in economic literature that governments face a conflict of interest in this regard. In fact, hard money advocates argue that central banks have utterly failed to obtain this objective of a stable currency. Now, I think uh, the more cynical and tinfoil hat among us would say, no, central banks have completely succeeded in obtaining their objective of an unstable currency because that's the reason why they were created. Under the gold standard, for example, the price level in both England and the U.S. remained relatively stable over literally hundreds of years, though with some protracted periods of deflation. Since the U.S. Federal Reserve has formed in 1913, however, the U.S. dollar has fallen to barely a 20th of its former value through the consistently inflationary policies of the bank. Economists counter that deflation is hard to control once it sets in and its effects are much more damage, damaging than modest, consistent inflation. Banks or governments relying heavily on seniorage and fractional reserve sources of revenue can find it counterproductive. Rational expectations of inflation take into account a bank's seniorage strategy and inflationary expectations can maintain high inflation. Instead of accruing seniorage from fiat money and credit, most governments opt to raise revenue primarily through taxation and other means. So that's seniorage. Now, you have to remember the seniorage of any currency is the ability 
of the government to print it at a profit. That means that the most popular currency is going to have the most uh, profitable seniorage. That's obviously going to be the U.S. dollar with the petrodollar standard currently in place. The U.S. dollar is by far the largest held uh, reserves in central bank vaults. Therefore, the U.S. dollar has the largest seniorage uh, bonus that uh, the is collected of any of the currencies now uh, most of us know that the Chinese are probably eyeing that seniorage value that the US dollar has and they certainly would like to get in on that game but they have not floated their currency as of yet it appears that the Chinese have a long-term goal of uh, uh, becoming a world currency and uh, being able to take advantage of that seniorage but Let's look at seniorage in terms of the Bitcoin because this is going to be an interesting discussion. Now, re you have to remember that seniorage is the profit that the issuing authority gains uh, over the cost of creating the currency, minting the currency. Uh, in the case of coins, it means stamping them. Uh, in the case of dollars, it means printing them. And in the case of digits, it means just simply uh, creating them with a keystroke. Obviously, the latter is going to have the highest seniorage. And if you can convince others overseas to hold that, uh, then you're going to have a tremendously profitable seniorage. Now, with Bitcoin, the question is, what is the seniorage with Bitcoin and who collects it? Those are going to be the two key questions. And the third question is going to be, is the seniorage in Bitcoin fixed or is it variable? So we know that the Bitcoin is limited to 21 million. We know that the miners are mining them uh, every day and that number is less and less. But the uh, cost, in, in other words, the cost becomes more and more as the number goes down. So the question is going to be as the price rises, when we had this tremendous price rise here up to 30, obviously the Bitcoin miners who were on board with their mining rigs were uh, collecting a very, very fat seniorage bonus because uh, they had low costs and the price of the Bitcoin was rising. The opposite occurred here as the price of the Bitcoin was falling, but obviously uh, inflation in the cost of electricity which is going to be one of the primary inputs electricity and the cost of the hardware now we know there's going to be a natural deflation in the price of the technology because that's the way technology tends to run it improves and uh, the price goes down but there is the cost of electricity which has that built-in inflation going on so Generally, as the price of the Bitcoin falls here, you're going to have a decrease in that seniorage premium. What is interesting about the Bitcoin, though, is that as the price falls, you're going to see more miners leave the business. And that's going to cause uh, the price of the Bitcoin to or the reward of Bitcoins to go up per share per person, uh, which ultimately should feed back into price. So it's fairly complicated as to how that works. But with the Bitcoin, you could say you have a sort of fixed seniorage in the sense that there is a variability in the price of the Bitcoin and the cost of mining it. And uh, so that's very complex. Now, as to who collects this seniorage profit obviously the original miner if uh, they ended up mining that at a profit then there's going to be a sort of ongoing seniorage for those miners who are processing the payments and they're also taking they're collecting some coins as payment processors so the main point with the seniorage of the bitcoin is that unlike the seniorage that you have in uh, government-backed fiat currencies or even government-issued uh, minted coin current coin-based currencies precious metal-based currencies that's collected by the sovereign in the case of Bitcoin there isn't a sovereign there's just the Bitcoin market and the Bitcoin system so the seniorage is going to have to be collected by the system itself by the Bitcoin market itself and thus we would expect that as the popularity of the Bitcoin rises, 
that the value of the seniorage is going to rise and therefore the price should rise. So we would expect that, that as that seniorage is pumped back into the value of the Bitcoin and back to the miners that uh, we would see a price rise with the adoption. Now the one disturbing thing is that with this large accumulation uh, we are not seeing that price rise. We're seeing a rolling over here, but the last chart is very important. That's going to be the MACD, and you can see we're actually negative and turn positive. So this is going to be one of the first times since about this time here, back at 5, where we've crossed from negative into positive. So if all of this holds, and if the Bitcoin story is true, and if Theodosian is wrong that Bitcoin isn't the hologram of a cryptocurrency but is actually a true cryptocurrency, then we will expect to see fairly soon a breakout into this price and a rise above $15. And we'll talk to you next time.